Grealish, you guys wanted to, to, to bring that up. I mean, you, yeah. you point out the fact that he's a 100 million pound player who doesn't start a game like this. Yeah, it doesn't start a game like this. And also, <clears throat> can you guys tell me a particular standout moment from Grealish this year? You know, the, the biggest sign of the summer, if you pay 100 million pound for a player, you're expecting to be a guy that decides games. And I don't think he has done. There's been a couple of instances in the last couple of games. So in the midweek against Atletico, he really struggled to deal with the attention he was being given by the Atletico defenders. He was being kicked and he was being, it was kind of a bit of a throwback, but he didn't handle it very well. And I think one thing is that if he plays against Atleti in, in Madrid, I'd be amazed. I think Pep will have seen that they were able to get at him. Can't play him against Atletico, get risk a red card. But against Liverpool yesterday, there was a moment, it was about 90 second minute yeah, where totally there, there was a counter attack on and Grealish had, had carried the ball and there's a great pass onto De Bruyne on the left hand side. And if, if he passes to De Bruyne, De Bruyne takes it to the corner fly, kills time and kills the game. Gre Grealish, score, Grealish took too many touches, lost the ball and Liverpool attacked and they, they really, they had a, a free kick from that and he could have scored. If they'd have scored then, Jack Grealish could have cost City the title. Now obviously it's ifs and buts, but it's just little things whereby for a hundred million pound players, decision making isn't great at times. That was time. mad, and De Bruyne was even mad. And we also the part. I mean, I don't know on television if you could see, depending on the angle, but the, in the stadium, everybody could see the pass was there. It was so easy, and yet he took an extra touch to go around Matip or Van Dijk, mm. and then or maybe even Fabinho, and then ended up losing the ball. I just think that, like Mares, when he arrived from Leicester, he needed a bit of time to adapt to Pep's tactics or style, whatever you want, to change his game a little bit because it's very different, as we've said many times, I know, but to play for Villa when you're the main guy and then to go to City and play. He's admitted that, hasn't he? He admitted that he found it difficult. Yeah, but I which think is he normal, I think. But I think he should have gone there realising what he was letting himself in for. He you, probably did, but it still, yeah. still, still takes a transition. I mean, yeah. I, I'm with you on this that. one. Like, he will like, get that. I don't know. I can't say for sure if he's going to get there, but I can say that I'm going to give him a pass mm. for this first year because... City is completely different to what he had at Villa. It's a different club. And it's a fortunate. lot of players, when they move to Manchester City, yeah. takes them a little yeah. bit. Not yeah. everybody's Ruben Diaz, yeah. who's you know, King Kong no. from day one. Right? It's fortunate as well in the sense that he's gone to a winning team. I mean, we see people like over the years, you know, Grealish, Naby Keita at Liverpool hasn't been great, but you get away with it, a team that's winning. You look at Lukaku, the stick he's getting at Chelsea, or, not, you know, or, or Pogba at United. If, yeah, you play, yeah. if you're a big name that goes to a team that doesn't win, it's much harder. At least Grealish is protected by the great players around him and the success that City are having. Mm. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.